In this question, we have to sketch graphs of a given function using the properties of first and the second derivatives. It's from the lesson 4.6. I have directly tell you a shortcut method for this. They have told you x is 1, x is 2, y is 3 and so on. They have given you the asymptotes basically. So which is the correct equation? But for this, if you have the four options, imagine you have the four options, it's very, very easy. Because over here, x means the denominator, right? It's undefined at that particular value. So over here, if x is 1, so at 1, there is an asymptote. x1 asymptote, x2 also, there's an asymptote. Here, there can't be any graph. Even if there is a graph, it will just go very close, but not at those points. That's an asymptote point. I'll show you the graphs the in graphing calculator in a minute after I explain these problems. But you will have your four options. Just carefully analyze which is the correct one. Over here, x is 1. So take it inside and write it as a factor. It will be x minus 1, x minus 2 in this case. What about this? It will be x minus, it will be x plus 1, x minus 1. Here we will have x minus 1 and this 3, not the y, only the x values, okay? x minus 3. What about this one? It's x plus 1, x minus 1. These x asymptotes are always along the x-axis, the denominator. They make the function undefined values, isn't it? So look at the denominators. Whatever you have, x will always be in the denominator. The y is in the numerator, which I'll tell you in a minute. Now let's carefully analyze these. Now I'll come to a, come in a minute for the square root. You can easily understand from the question which is a square root function and which is not. First thing, here it's minus 1, minus 2. Okay, this can be the answer. What if there are two options with this? If this x divided by the same denominators, how would you di differentiate? That is from the y asymptotes, which I'll tell you in a minute. But let's look over here and here. Are these the same? Of course, because you have a plus b, a minus b rule or identity, isn't it? It'll be a squared minus b squared or a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b, a minus b. If you have these two, you can multiply them by FOIL method and then you will reduce it to this. It'll be x squared. I can directly use the identity minus 1 squared, that is 1. Or if I start multiplying, it'll be x squared minus x. Then again, plus x minus 1. This cancels out. You're remaining with x squared minus 1. Therefore, we have this denominator. What about the fourth question over here? x minus 1, x minus 3. Yes, that's correct. Now, here also it's correct. So the first thing would be the denominators. And easily you can eliminate many options just by looking at the denominators. I hope the denominators is clear. Now let's go to the numerators. What about the numerator? Here there are a few things you must remember. Whenever you have x power 2, that is quadratic, whatever is the coefficient, what is the coefficient over here? It's year 3, provided there are two denominators, okay? Because most of the time you will have x degree 2 only, okay? So now the degree is 2, this is also 2. Whatever is the coefficient of this x squared is y. Even over here, you can see this is x power 2. So what is y? y must be 2. Imagine you add something like this, minus 5x squared by x squared minus 1 squared or 1 is enough. Now, what is the coefficient over here? Because it's x squared down, x squared, it'll be minus y is equal to minus 5. This is the, uh, that's the y asymptote. Now, what about this one here? Whenever the degree is less in the top, the denominator is more, y will always be 0. Look here, whenever the x is there, the coefficient doesn't matter, it's 1. Even if it was minus 10 here, it would be y is equal to 0, which I'll show in the graphing calculator in a minute. Now, if it was 5 here also, it will be y equals 0. So this is how you differentiate between these. You have been only given up to uh, quadratics because cubic will be just more complicated. You would have, you know, uh, sl slanted uh, asymptotes and everything. But what about these square root one? Whenever there is a square root in the denominator, just remember up doesn't matter. It's x. Here, whatever is this coefficient, you should write plus or minus 2. If in case you had over here, say, 
7. It would be y is equal to plus or minus 7. That's how we do it. So now let's let's uh, understand this thoroughly using a graphing calculator. I hope this is clear because over here, denominated, you have x minus 1, x minus 2, and y is the coefficient 3, y is 3. So that's why this is the correct answer. You can easily eliminate all the other options. This is wrong because there's square root. This is having 2 here, and this is having only x here. And whereas if you look at this question, only this is the possible answer, only this. You can have a little different answer as well. Over here, I can have three as well. Therefore, it is very important for you to look into all the four options and then eliminate and get the correct answer. Now, let's go to the graphing calculator for a minute. Now, you can see I have uh, written some equations here. Let's look at this ax squared divided by x minus b, x minus c. The numerator, the y value is 1. If I just change this to any value, say, 8.6 now then the asymptote at y is equal to will be 8.6 as you can see the y value it eventually goes to 8.6 if you zoom out you can see the y value is going closer and closer to 8.6 even over here it'll be the same thing let's go back say a reasonable over here if you go to negative numbers it'll be negative let's leave that at say 2 what about these these are the x asymptotes now if i go the undefined values over here that is at x over here it should be at one let me just change this and make it minus so over here we go since i've written this minus already over here 10 would be 10 if it was plus here it'd be other way around imagine let me take it as plus and plus every way let me take it as plus so now if it's plus 10 it'll be at minus can you see this it's at minus 10 and if it has plus minus 5.7 it'll be plus 5.7 that's how we get the answers over here. And similarly, let's go to the cubic one. Cubic one, see, as I told you, it will have horizontal asymptotes, uh, I mean, oblique asymptotes. So you can leave this. It's not asked generally, but it'd be the similar thing. Over here, the down denominator asymptotes won't change. It'll be the same denominator. These are the undefined values. Denominator is the same. So let's leave that. Let's go to the square root one. Now here we have these asymptotes, the, these asymptotes will be same, B and C, you can see over here it's undefined over there, so those will be the same. But what about this A value? If you have say A value of 10, let me take 10, you will have not only 1 plus 10, you will also have minus 10. So this is the difference. Now what if you have negative values, say you have negative 10, uh, negative 8, so then you will have the same thing minus over here plus 8 1 is plus 8 1 is minus 8 and what if there is no square root it's just a, a you know 1 x to the power 1 over here but down there is 2 degree 2 so over here the asymptote will only be at 0 if you zoom out you can see it doesn't matter which coefficient you have a doesn't matter over here it will always be at 0 itself that is how we can differentiate and denominator you know it doesn't change that'll be the same thing so this is how we can analyze it from the graph as well most importantly to solve these problems just look into the options eliminate the options and then choose the correct answer that is the end of this question i hope it is clear if you have any doubts please consider re-watching the video or posting your doubts in the comments i hope you all will head on to the next video